guys, it's Captain Where the Cat Goes, and today we're doing Glendalow State Park Part 1, <laughs> the Valentine Resort. So come and follow me, and it's where the cat goes today. Glendalow State Park, the Valentine Resort. Was, this is a fascinating little piece of history. This park, I actually had to split it up into four pieces so that we can get it covered as best I can. So come follow me, it's where the cat goes today. Over fencing along the side here. I don't know if that was from when it was a game farm or when it was hunting club. So that was interesting to see that. Well, you're not supposed to drink alcohol at state parks, and you're definitely not supposed to throw it in the water. Valentine was put in the schoolroom at the early age of four, so he had a really good education. Of course, he was an attorney, so it kind of speaks for itself. For a while there, he was a teacher at the state of Wisconsin school for, I'm sorry, but this is what they called it back then, the school for the deaf and dumb. Times have changed, guys, but this again was in the you know late 1800s, so times have changed quite a bit since then. And in 1885, he, with F.E. Keniston and J.A. Nelson, started a bank in Breckenridge under the name of Wilkin County Bank. Uh, in June 1888, he and others established the Barnesville State Bank, of which institution he is now one of the directors. At that point, you know, he's not alive anymore. <laughs> Uh, he owned a good deal of land property in Wilkin County. This would probably be talking a lot about the Glendalow State Park area now. And the retreat that he had, the nice little summer retreat at Glendalow. And and in, uh, the, and also in Dakota, it says. I'm not sure if Dakota was, meant north and south were one at that time or what, but Dakota. And president of the Wappington Telephone Company. So in other words, this guy had a lot of money, especially for back in those days. He was a lawyer. He was involved in the community. Um, he, he was really good about wanting to preserve nature, too. And when he passed away, which he actually passed away at this site at Glendalow State Park. Well, it wasn't that at, the, at his retreat. Um, what I found out about that, it sounds like he died of a stroke, um, which back then, you know, it was just it was a sudden death of leading to unconsciousness and dying um so that's kind of he's he died suddenly there from what i understood in fact i think i have something here to read about that too i am going to try and include a copy of the newspaper article that i found uh, that says ezra g valentine dies suddenly um where it talks about how he passed away at his resort very sad ending. It says that he died um, death by ap ap apoplexy. Let me see. This is how it said. Apoplexy. Apoplexy. Get that? Apoplexy. Which is, the definition says, unconscious or inactive resulting, or incapacity, sorry. Unconscious or in incapacity resulting from cerebral hemorrhage or stroke. Head. Um, says from the 14th, from the 14th to late 19th century, 
referred it was referred to as any sudden death that began with a sudden loss of consciousness especially one in which the victim died within a matter of seconds after losing consciousness so most likely a stroke um imagine that could cover a lot of things and again the word for it is pronounced apoplexy because i have a hard time saying that apoplexy apoplexy thank you google so let's go check out the resort Woohoo! Come and follow me and see where the cat goes today. Valentine's Resort. Really quick, back to the hospital. According to sfcare.org, um, it talks about hospitals and stuff here. It says, um, what the nun said to him was, but we don't have, we don't have much money, but lots of faith. And what Valentine said to them was, that's enough, sister. Go ahead and we will back you. And thus, St. Francis Hospital got its start. So it was St. Francis Hospital that he had helped with. Isn't that incredible? Like, I'm I'm really glad to see that people that have money can do good things with it, too. It has, like, a part to hook up. Like, this is obviously broken and old, not maintained. I'm not sure what this is. So I'm going to go check it out. Okay, I'm Parker. Now let's go take a look at this. Parker and I attached it to that little thing that was there. I wonder if this is left over from the... Well, even this can is been rusted up there for a long time. I wonder if this is part of the hunting lodge. Okay.
Jesus, let me know. What happens? the lake from my campsite. There's a beautiful deer trail. There's another deer trail that goes down this way. Animal trail. There's a tree that went down. A long time ago. I guess even the grass has been recovered and came in that service. expecting us to find a bunch of remnants and artifacts, ruins from old days from this place, but here we are. Oh, awesome. That seems to be a building right here. of it. Someone has been here uh, swimming and left their towel. <laughs> but, interesting. This would have been one separate room. Like it was made with just rocks and then concrete and wood. There's still pieces of wood in there. Look at that. Here we go. Here's a good sample of how it was built. This is actually a full house, I think. 
wonder if this is the, the place where the game farmer lived. Yeah. There's another room right there. Another room right here. surprised by this building and the remnants of it. Ruins here. Hope this shows up well. There's a whole bunch of busted up uh, concrete, if you will. This is so fascinating because like possibly early 1900s, late 1800s. Yeah, there's like rocks and wood. Some kind of I'm also very curious because if I just came on shore twice and found remnants and ruins of times before going to Doe State Park, then I wonder how much more there is out there to see.
guys, when I was going through some of my older pictures, I found a picture that had some more information about Valentine's Camp. So I'm going to go ahead and read that, and then I'm going to include the extra pictures. So I'm going to have to re-edit this really quick and then repost it. Okay, it says, Ezra G. Valentine, lawyer and, and longtime resident of Breckenridge, Minnesota, purchased a 30-acre parcel located between Anne, Annie Battle Lake and Blanche Lake on August 6, 1901. And then he built the, the camp and everything, um, which started in 1902. On this sign, it says, 1903, he constructed several buildings, including a two-story summer cottage, which I'm thinking that is the ruins that we see here. And... He, he even built an, a bowling alley there. Is that crazy? That's awesome. I didn't know that. This is in 1904, the bowling alley was built. The lanes were purchased from Everett's in Battle Lake and moved to the new building. By August of 05, a resident, a resident and I can't see what this is, and something light plant had been added. Cool. Construction for all faculties told approximately fifteen thousand dollars. Of course, this was in nineteen by nineteen o four here, or by nineteen o five. Um, and then on August nineteenth, nineteen o five, while strolling on the grounds of the camp, E. G. Valentine unexpectedly, unexpectedly died from a stroke at the age of fifty eight. The property was left to his son John Adlin and daughter Miss Blanche. The family used the retreat until the early 1920s, and on 1912, and on a 1912 plat mat and a 1914 USGS map, the property is called Mena, Menachoka Camp, and it is unknown why the name had changed. Well, that's weird. That's interesting. I, I wonder why it was called. Manachoka Camp. I wonder if that's where Valentine bought the property from because somebody had the property before him. Interesting. I'm going to have to do some research on that. For a, few, for a few years, the camp was virtually unoccupied, and then in 1925, the camp was sold to Fred A. Everett, a Battle Lake lumberman. And Mr. Everett bought the property for speculation and sold it three years later in 1928 and that's probably when the Tribune took over it actually so my facts that I've had before weren't quite accurate because they said it was sold in 1926 which this is just uh information I'm reading off the state park sign so my dates may not be exactly accurate exactly accurate <laughs> exactly, exactly and accurate <laughs> but they were pretty close and now we know what day he died. He passed away on August 19th, 1905, during the day while strolling around the grounds of his camp from a stroke at the age of 58. It's not very old. Well, I just wanted to add this little tidbit to my video. This is from the board that's outside the lodge. It talks about Valentine's camp at Glendale. Here's a few photos that I've found oh, I wish they were so blurry and old pictures though oh. that is Valentine out on his docks Um, this picture is from June 5th, 1903, it looks like. See? Eighteen eighty seven, August 11th. <clears throat> Here's the... Picture everybody in their fancy swimsuits at the posing for a picture before a swim. This is what the period clothes were of the day, guys. This is what people actually were wearing. That's what they would have wore to the resort. 
And since the it was a popular resort, they had camping areas because there wasn't enough room for everybody in the in the two cottages that they had. And you know what's crazy is that I'm on bet you that every single person in all these pictures that passed away a long time ago of ripe old ages because these pictures were taken in between the late 1800s and the very, very early 1900s. And it's now 2021.